This is the Plant Yourself Podcast. I'm Howard Jacobson of PlantYourself.com, the Big Change Program with Josh Lajani, and Well Start Health. This podcast is part of my mission to help you live a well and wonderful life. So when we individually are struggling to improve our health, to change our habits and our behaviors, it's easy to view it as a very personal, individual thing. And the truth is, our caveman and cavewomen ancestors didn't have this problem, and our peasant ancestors didn't have this problem, and our hunter-gatherer ancestors didn't have this problem. So what's happened? Have our genes suddenly changed? I don't think that's very likely. It's our environments that have changed, right? We are living in what uh, Boyd Swinburne calls obesogenic societies. We're living in cultures where the easiest thing in the world is to overconsume highly palatable, fractionated, fake foods, to sit on our butts and avoid natural human movement, to spend our lives in air-conditioned boxes and vehicles and never being exposed to the elements, to avoid contact with real nature, to disturb our sleep patterns with electrical lights and strange schedules. And all of this together creates a perfect storm for obesity and chronic disease. And nowhere is that perfect storm more perfect than in the typical American workplace. You know, we sit all day hunched over, staring at monitors. The food in the cafeteria or when we go out to eat with colleagues is extremely tempting and unhealthy. More and more of us are working longer and longer hours under more and more stress. And the American healthcare system, which is largely funded by employers, has no idea how to deal with this, right? We've got wellness programs that give you little pablums like take the stairs, not the elevator, and take the skin off of your chicken breast and have a little bit of extra salad and go for a two-minute walk here and there. And even those well-meaning ideas are only being acted upon by those in the organization who are already healthy. And then you've got the whole health insurance mess which doesn't do anything to prevent people from getting these diseases in the first place. And when they, once they've got them, encourages overtreatment and use of very questionable therapies, including drugs that may affect biomarkers, but don't improve outcomes at all, and a lot of treatments that frankly make things worse. So about a year and a half ago, I had on the podcast uh, Olivia Kelly, who had just founded a company called Well Start Health that was looking to tackle the chronic disease epidemic through real lifestyle change and to bring it to a large audience through a high-tech, high-touch digital platform. Now, the real question was, could a company like that make money by helping people get well, as opposed to the current model in which companies like drug companies, insurance companies, hospital systems make money by keeping people sick? and just managing their diseases with with ever more expensive treatment options. So I was real intrigued after having that conversation with Olivia. We kept in touch, and we started working together when Josh Lajani and I put together the Big Change Program, and we were looking for an online platform that would allow us to do our, our coaching and teaching in a way that could reach lots of people and not drive us crazy. And from there, things naturally sort of evolved to the point where Josh and I were in talks with Olivia and her chief medical officer and co-founder, Boyana Yankovic Weatherly, to actually merge, to bring the big change program, which we had been doing on a very small you know, business-to-consumer scale, and really take it to corporations, take it to the places that need it the most, to big companies with lots of employees, many of whom are sick, many of whom are on very expensive treatment regimens. And and for most of these companies, the healthcare costs are the second biggest line item after payroll. So the healthcare crisis, which is so unnecessary, which is based on so many faulty assumptions and perverse incentives, is pretty much responsible for destroying the middle class and pretty much responsible for destroying the American dream for a lot of people, both in terms of the $3 trillion annually that are being funneled from ordinary people's pockets into the healthcare industry, and in terms of the lower quality of life that people are experiencing because they're getting sicker and sicker at younger and younger ages. 
So after much deliberation and soul searching, Josh and I decided to join Wellstart Health as co-founders. Um, Josh is the chief brand officer, and I am the chief behavioral science officer. So on today's podcast, we've brought together Josh and Boyana and Olivia and myself for a conversation about what we're up to, about why it's important. And, you know, if you're a, a fan of the podcast, a fan of my work, a fan of moving the plant-based lifestyle into the mainstream, then it's a chance for you to hear what we're up to and possibly lend us a hand. So without further ado, Olivia Kelly, Boyana Yankovic Weatherly, and Josh Lajani, welcome to the Plant Yourself podcast. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Great to be here. So this is the, this is the first four-person uh, podcast I've ever done, but luckily we are, we are on video so we can see each other's faces. And the reason we're here is this is my gig now. The four of us are uh, Wellstart Health. And a lot of people who listen to the podcast kind of occasionally want to know, like, what am I up to? And can I tell some of my story? And, you know, people want to know, like, what's, what's up? What's going on in, in my life? And what's going on in my life is you guys and this company. And so the, the goal of this podcast is partly to just share with uh, with you fine listeners, like what I'm up to and why I think it's the most important thing in the world I can be doing. I want to introduce you to my uh, my fabulous team um, that I've chosen to uh, to do this with, and and also hopefully to uh, to spread the word about what we're up to, so that if you have any sort of ability to uh, to help us on that mission, you'd be uh, inclined to do so. So let's let's start with you, Olivia. You're the uh, the founder, founder, and the the CEO of Wellstart Health. Tell us. Well, you've you've been on the podcast probably like two years ago or a year and a half ago or something. But just bring us up to date on uh, what what you're up to and what you were thinking when when you started this whole thing. Yeah, cool. So yeah, the, I think it was probably about a year and a half ago, and a lot of great and exciting and promising things have happened since then. I'm not sure if it was because of being on the podcast, but uh, you never know. <laughs> um, so correlation causation question. But anyway, so yeah, we've been, um, since founding Wellstart, which was late 2015, um, we've basically been up to um, recruiting participants for preclinical pilots, running pilot programs, seeing a lot of success with people um, really improving their health in a short period of time with the guidance of physicians, dietitians, health coaches, um, and all of the resources, um, articles, and so forth that we've given them and, and having an opportunity to discuss um, the journey in a group setting. Um, and of course, at first we had no technology. Everything was piecemeal. Since then, we've built some awesome technology um, with help from our CTO, John Salzarulo, um, and we continue to iterate um, on that technology, as you know, because you've been a part of that process. Um, and so then we've uh, raised a significant amount of our seed round of funding through Launchpad Digital Health in San Francisco. Um, and uh, so in this past space of over a year, uh, Boyana has come on board. And then more recently, you guys very recently, which is so exciting to have, I think, all of us with our very very complementary skill sets and personalities to be able to basically take uh, chronic disease prevention, mitigation, and reversal and scale it to millions of people right now focused on the U.S. and then eventually many other parts of the world where we're exporting chronic disease. So let's now also hopefully export the solution. Hmm. So uh, let's let's draw the a, a connecting line. So everyone who listens to this podcast knows that uh, the way we eat and live can prevent and reverse the common chronic diseases that, uh, that disable and kill us. Draw the line between that and what Wellstart is up to, just for someone who has no idea what, what, what we do. Right. So, um, yeah, so what we're eating, the way we're eating, the way we're generally not moving, and the way we're generally not coping well with stress are all things that are really, really damaging to our health uh, on an individual level. And then, of course, as a population. Um, so what we're trying to do is help through coaching, through physician guidance, through dietitian guidance, and through a whole slew of support resources, um, and as well as technology and really leveraging technology to help with deliver all of those things, help people get on track to where they know 
everyone knows they should eat healthy and move around, but that doesn't really cut it because what does that actually mean? So we help people unpack what does that mean specifically? What do people need to be doing? Um, they need to be eating a lot more unprocessed plant-based foods. They need to be moving around a lot more. They need to have social connection and support. So all of these things are, are resources that we help uh, people uh, have at their fingertips and also to make them the center of their own health. I like to say the CEO of their own health so that they're not relying upon outside and external um, resources, but they're actually taking control of their own well-being. Um, so we help them do that through all of the modalities I mentioned. And they many people don't have to be living with the diseases that they're living with. Um, oftentimes they can they can heavily mitigate or really reverse the condition, reduce or go off medications many times, um, avoid procedures that they may have had to have otherwise and just feel so much better and energetic and, and have a new lease on life. And we've seen many, many people um, achieve that through WellStart and through the Big Change Program. And so the idea is to bring that to as many people as humanly possible that are open to doing it because why not live your best life? And can you talk a little bit about the um, the corporate part where, uh, you know, so like well play, uh, workplace wellness, you know, we've seen right. like, you know, Amazon and Warren Buffett and now Apple and different organizations like we've got to take care of healthcare. Like why, yeah. you know, companies right now, we know that healthcare is a mess. How are you seeing WellStart playing in, in that in that marketplace, in that field right now? Yeah, so companies are, yeah, spending their, their second biggest line item after payroll is healthcare, and it continues to increase dramatically every year, their costs. And big companies basically put up the money to pay for their um, employees' healthcare. We call that self-insured or self-funded. And so for those companies, we want to help them by helping their populations not just drink more water or take the stairs, which is great, but for the people who are living with a chronic disease or maybe want more than one, it's not that simple. They need, um, we need to provide a well being program for people who are already sick, who are costing, you know, probably the 20% of an, of an employee population that is costing over 80% of the healthcare dollars for that company. Those are the people that we want to help not just take the stairs, but get dramatically better, saving companies a lot of money, helping improve employee well-being, productivity, the overall workplace culture. Um, so it's, yes, there's a lot of noise around wellness and well-being, but we're really much more than that. We're about fundamentally changing um, the approach and the health, hopefully, of many, many people um, in the workforce. Gotcha. Hey, could you could you introduce our doctor? Yeah, I would like to introduce my lovely co-founder and chief medical officer, Dr. Boyana Yankovic Weatherly. Hi. Um, thank you for uh, having us, Howard. And um, it's uh, it's really such a pleasure to be here. Um, I um, I'm going to tell you a little bit, sort of about. Uh, uh, my background and then how uh, I merged with WellStart and, and how Olivia and I started working together. Uh, I'm a board certified internist and trained in, trained in the conventional uh, medical setting. Um, and very quickly, I mean, it doesn't take a long to realize that, um, that in the current healthcare system, uh, physicians and other practitioners are simply not well supported to help people truly transform their lifestyle habits, including their eating, their sleep, um, their stress management, uh, their movement. Uh, we know exactly what to tell people and what guidelines recommend. And sure, in some cases, there might be some disagreement about which particular diet or which particular type of exercise training, but we all agree that more plants are better. We all agree that more movement is better, of course, unless somebody has a medical contraindication, that at least seven to eight hours of sleep a night is better. 
that social support is better and that stress management is important. But what's where the problem lies is that it's it's very difficult to implement that in a clinical setting when you have 15 minutes with a patient uh, who maybe already has chronic disease or maybe they have uh, they're at risk of chronic disease. They're coming to you with a specific problem or for an annual physical exam. There are symptoms to review. There are medications to review. There are a number of other elements to do. And then most physicians probably get just a few minutes to kind of go over somebody's diet and to and then and do a bit of counseling. And that is not how. I mean, Howard, you you know this. Um, I think more than anybody else, you you you, you know you did your your PhD in, in psychology, but that is not how we change habits. That is that is not an effective way to change habits long term. And so, as I was practicing primary care uh, at Cedar Sinai. Uh, I uh, started to voice some of these concerns and uh, uh, and started an initiative to uh, to try to address some of these areas. Uh, presented it to my CEO, and uh, several months later, my CEO and Olivia had a meeting, and he literally called me in the middle of my clinic day and said, "I just met your twin. You guys need to meet. When are you available?" And so I said, oh, well, this afternoon, you know, after I uh, finished seeing patients. And so Olivia and uh, 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 her former co-founder that she worked with at the time came to my office and we had a lovely conversation. And at that time, they had done their first pilot um, where uh, they provided support and guidance to uh, people at risk of or who currently have chronic disease such as diabetes or high blood pressure and they showed me some of their results. And I was really impressed because these people were able to lose weight over a period of eight weeks. They were able to lose weight. Their blood pressures went down. Uh, their hemoglobin A1C went down. They felt happier. And I thought, okay, there's something to this. This is, this is a way to make things work. And as we started to talk more and more, um, and uh, uh, I, I really... I really started to research this on my own as well. And I researched plant-based diets and, and really looked into some of the, the great body of evidence when it comes to uh, both uh, health coaching programs as well as plant-based or plant-forward diet, uh, plant forward diet programs and, and realized that this was far superior to anything that we're doing in the clinical setting currently, far superior to the standard of care. And yet, Nobody really has access to this. Not very many people are, are engaging in, in uh, um, or offering these sorts of programs. And, and so. And when you, mm -hmm. when, when you were trained as a physician, were you trained in counseling, even if you had had the time? So we did receive some training in motivational interviewing. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did one of the great things, actually, that my understanding is that this is now present in, in most, if not all medical schools, is that you do get observed in how you counsel patients and how you discuss. So you do get some training in this, and but it's really mostly based on motivational interviewing. But honestly, even the people who are best at this, they just simply don't have the time. I think time is just the biggest factor because when you're having to, to deal with um, somebody who's coming in for a sick visit, but you realize, oh, and they also have diabetes and their last hemoglobin A1C was above um, the expected range. And I really should discuss with them their diet and, and such and such, but they came in for other problems and I only have 15 minutes. What do I do? And you sort of get into that, a bit of that, not necessarily panic mode, but just like you get through your to-do list and then time's up. So when are you going to do your motivational interviewing or any other skills that, that you may have? Um, to to really uh, um, help that patient, and I do have to say, I mean, emphasis is I think we're we're great at treating people who are sick, who are in the hospitals, who are in the ICUs, but when it comes to prevention and when it comes to hey, how can we help you get off of these meds and lose some weight and feel happy again, um, and and um, you know help with your meds, so many other things that are and other chronic diseases that are correlated. Um, there's there's definitely a lack of time, some training, but not sufficient. 
and, and just lack of emphasis overall. Those are just not the metrics, unfortunately, that, that physicians are judged on. Hmm. What you're describing sounds like a, a recipe for like low career satisfaction. Like you have these doctors who, who I'm sure go into it not thinking, hey, I'm going to make a fortune. You know, they know they're going to get well compensated. But, but every doctor I know when they were, you know, they were young and idealistic, they're like, I want to help people. They all have a relative that they can think of. And it sounds like, especially when you're given the tools and not the time or resources or support to use them, it's, it sounds like it could become a, a fairly miserable grind. Well, I think, you know, what I've experienced is that you're, I think you're absolutely right. You know, we go into medicine wanting to save lives, improve people's lives, connect with people. And unfortunately, uh, what it can be a lot of the times is, is just sort of, uh, you're engaged with your electronic medical record rather than engaging, being engaged with the patient and making that eye contact and making that connection about things that really matter and then, um, and then again, just the way that the medical records are set up and the way that these um, uh, metrics are, are, are set up is that you end up sort of checking off boxes and it's easy to fall into that pattern. And I think that, um, that definitely, you know, if you don't set aside that time to really connect with a patient and at least, you know, maybe uncover one little thing at a visit and maybe just uncover, um, you know, make some connection and and try to find some common ground or, or help them gain some insight about their own behavior. Even if it's just very for, for a short, for a limited period of time, I think it's absolutely easy to get burnt out and to feel like you're in a dialogue with your computer and your medical record rather than with your patient. Absolutely. Yeah, I also, I also want to say that I don't know a lot of doctors who've been doing this for a while whom I would characterize as healthy. Right, right. You know, so even even if you did get the time and you did have the, the capability to counsel, there's a there's a kind of awkwardness around, you know, well, I'm not doing it, but you should. Right, right, absolutely. I think it's very difficult to... Um, to counsel on things. And of course, none of us are, I mean, we all have our, our um, goals and, and wishes and, uh, and our weak spots. But overall, I think it's very difficult to counsel someone on a healthy diet, regular movement and um, adequate sleep, stress management, when we're having extreme difficulties in, in those areas ourselves. And, and I think that, again, just going back to the problem of physician burnout and absolutely, if you're burnt out, I mean, even though you may have the whole set of skills and the best of intentions and might be an, a, an amazing doctor, it's, it's going to be difficult to um, get the message across when you haven't carved out the time to, um, to practice some of these habits yourself. I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Yeah, which I think brings brings me to um, exhibit three, Josh. <laughs> you're, you're sort of, um, you know, patient zero for turning your own life and health around in ways that it's very hard to argue with. So, uh, you know, I think the listeners to this podcast, those who've been listening for a while, know your story. You've been on two or three previous episodes. If not, I'll put I'll put them all in the show notes for people to check up on. Why don't you give us just like a... a, a 30 second introduction to who you are and like what you see in this partnership. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I, I'm Josh. I, I grew up in South Louisiana and one thing we know even, even more, even we're even more familiar with it than food and alcohol is, is, um, is the current sort of healthcare paradigm. We seem to be in and out of the hospital a lot, go into the doctors a lot, different specialists, whether it's back or whatever, a back problem or a cardiovascular problem usually. Like, that's the reality I grew up in was, you know, we work hard, we live hard, we play hard, we have a good time, we eat a lot and drink a lot while we do it. it. Um, But um, 
but also we spend a lot of time uh, in ICUs or at, at, uh, at, at doctor's offices um, with different uh, ailments. Um, and so I grew up in that reality and I saw my grandfather go through, you know, all of the, that whole progression um, throughout, throughout the standard American life of you get a little heavier, you get a little sicker, you take a little more pills, you go to more doctors, you get a little older, you get a little sicker. And somewhere in the middle, as I was watching all of that, I was becoming that my very self. I had 32 years old. I found myself about 420 pounds, um, you know, an ex-football player with a, with a, with a, with an injury that kept him from getting out and moving and, in a social paradigm, cultural paradigm that really sort of kept me in love with food and not only in love with the taste of the food and the, but the community around it and what boiling crawfish meant and all of those things. Um, and I found myself right in the middle of becoming the same thing. Uh, and, and through just a series of like lucky chances in my life, I got inspired and in, I guess a way that people, other people don't, I still don't understand why it, things clicked for me and didn't click for other people. Um, that I've seen throughout my life, but, but, uh, I think, I've, I think it was just a perfect blend of me actually going to school and getting educated a little bit as an older guy in, in my thirties. Um, and I took things to, to heart in a different way, got a little bit more pragmatic. The saints went in the Super Bowl. my wife marrying me, some things that were really awesome in my life. Me getting my degree really sort of made me feel like it was possible for Josh to do something different. But what did different mean? You know, at that time, I just started moving more and eating less. And, and, um, and I just, but I just uh, eventually fell into running. And that led me into a plant based diet through, through um, Rich Roll and Scott Jurek and all of the icons and, and running and ultra running. And I became in love with that movement of the human body. It just made good sense to me that it was just the most essential, perfect human thing to do to run around and cover territory is just, and so that falling into that sort of rabbit hole really brought me to you, Howard, that that's where I wound up, you know, reading whole and learning, learning about who Howard Jacobson is. And, and one day actually, you know, having him, friend me on Facebook. And that was, that was a, a surreal experience. And, and lo and behold, here I am with what has turned out to be answers that people want. I, how did you do it? You know, I've lost 230 pounds. I've become an ultra marathoner. Now I find myself being an advocate for not only a plant-based diet, but for getting outside and using bipedal locomotion to connect with your essential humanity. Um, and, how can I, like what you were talking about, Boyana, be a part of that part that's missing in the prevention part, right? We all go to the doctor and we get the pill or we get the bandage or we get the device or we get the procedure. But in the lobby, you know, it should be like this ubiquitous thing. We should, there should always, we should always be addressing the food and the lifestyle. Every chance that a person is sitting still inside of that. Um, anyway, and I don't know how, I don't know how to be a part of that, um, other than what we're doing here. That's what strikes me as something so valuable is how we're able to take these things that I've learned. And then you guys are a lot smarter than me and you've come to the same conclusions. <laughs> and I'm, so it really emboldens me in my like decision to go with it. And, uh, and so to be able to take that knowledge have friends around me who can really talk about the science in a way that makes that makes sense and doesn't just sound like some dude from Chag Bay regurgitating something abstract he read somewhere on the internet, right? <laughs> um, it's it's just an extremely exciting time for me to be able to be part of a team. I really feel in a, so inadequate in so many ways when it comes to like education and background and like all of these different things. Um, but 
it does feel like a way, like a leverage point, if you will, to be able to actually reach, you know, friends that are might be on the oil rig or on a on or on a, a seagoing vessel or or um work in a pipeline somewhere or you never like I have friends all over the place who who don't have the luxury. They didn't have a Bam Bam. So Bam Bam um, allowed me to be able to be self-employed and I can explore a lot of these things and maybe figure out how to help guys who are stuck in these employment situations to do some of the same things that I've been able to implement in my life. Um, and I feel like the technology and a lot of the things that we've been working on is a real, a huge, has a huge potential to be a tool for those guys. And that is something that just kind of sets my hair on fire as an, as a concept, as an idea. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I love about working with you is that you you represent a demographic that, frankly, you know, the plant-based movement hasn't really figured out how to reach and argu- arguably, yeah. you know, and arguably could benefit the most. So if someone's sort of, you know, upper upper east side of Manhattan and they're, you know, they're having their, you know, Whole Foods delivered meals, but they're also having a bunch of meat. And then we, like, we can we can certainly make huge improvements in people's lives. But when you look at, like, you know, the folks that you know who don't go to Whole Foods, who don't go to uh, plant stock, who like they've uh, like, you know, in the Missing Chins Run Club, which you helped to co-found, like they got that from you and from other people in the community. And, you know, what, one of the things that uh, that I love about what we're doing, just in terms of a business plan, and I'd like, love for Olivia to, to speak to this, is... Like where can where can we get the biggest bang for the buck for for what we're doing? And it seems to be precisely um, sort of you know blue collar jobs and industries that have been really left out of the of the conversation about lifestyle. Yeah, um, is that a question for me? Yes. <laughs> yes, um, it's true. I mean, certainly. Um, you know, it's in in some ways, uh, poor health ha- has been a great equalizer in that it's it's really transcending uh, socioeconomic strata. It's it's everybody um, of of all walks who are having facing these same challenges and issues. But yes, for sure, I think a lot of people in manufacturing, I think the healthcare workforce, I think the transportation workforce. Um, all of those um, types of workers are, they're on a job for a long time. Um, it has physical, um, you know, ramifications for them, oftentimes just the work that they're doing. Um, they, they don't have access to healthy food. They don't have access to um, stress management and things like that. And often they're siloed in whatever they're doing. Maybe they work weird shifts or they work alone. So they don't have the social support network either. And so a lot of those folks are the people that we really want to help because they need a lot of help and we can be there with them wherever they go um, through our technology and through our remote um, coaching and virtual visits and things like that. So, um, and those are people who are, are also costing many, many healthcare dollars to their employer. So of course, the, uh, hopefully in the employer cares about their employees quality of life, but even if they don't, they're going to care about the bottom line. And that bottom line is being, severely injured by the way things are going right now. Can you talk a little bit about the the way things are going right now? Because I came into this very naive. And, you know, when we started talking maybe six or seven months ago, I just had this idea like, oh, well, we have have a better way of doing things. Of course, everyone will jump on it just because that's how capitalism works. When you come up with a better mousetrap, everyone everyone wants to abandon the old mousetrap. And, you know, and Boyana has talked about obstacles to doctors doing what is in the best interest of patients and doctors. Um, what are, what are some of the obstacles that we you know, that the industry, like, why aren't things better already? Why do we need, why do we need to, you know, to get on our bicycles and pedal as fast as we can? Uh, right. Well, I think, unfortunately, capitalism isn't always um, as efficient as we hope it will be. Um, and I think that, you know, healthcare isn't a, a typical marketplace and it's treated like one here 
in our country. Um, so we, we spend $3.4 trillion on healthcare every year. That's almost 20% of our GDP. 80, over 85% of that, or around 85% of that, goes to chronic disease management. So most of the zillions of dollars that we're spending on healthcare doesn't need to be spent if we can help people um, address the root causes of their diseases, which of course, food is the number one cause. Um, and it's, it's not people's fault. I mean, they are inundated with, they're basically walking through a minefield of really poor choices that are, that, you know, big food has, has thrust upon us. And there's not um, a lot people can do if they don't have access or education, they need some guidance to know that there are affordable ways and accessible ways to eat better. They just need to know how to do it. Um, so I think, um, you know, we're in a really a huge quagmire right now and, and the, the healthcare costs the trajectory, the way it's going right now is just completely unsustainable. Um, employees could be getting so much more money in their pocket if they weren't, if their employer wasn't spending so much of their uh, salaries on healthcare. And so that's just one, um, one example, but healthcare is bankrupting families. I mean, people really run out of money because of the medical bills that they have to pay. And they don't know that there is another way. And for many, they're far down the line and maybe for them, there isn't a way, but there's so many people who we can get to before it gets to that point for them. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think, what we all want to do. Right. So this is great in theory, but does it work? Like, <laughs> Well, of course it works. <laughs> I mean, of, of course, no, that, that, was a, that was a softball question. <laughs> is everybody going to do it? No, not everyone is going to do it. But, be, but having it, you know, that be an excuse like, oh, well, not everyone's going to do it. It's going to be hard to get people to do is not a, is not a good one, not a good excuse. Um, if, P, if patients and, and, you know, just individuals are not um, given the option then how can they ever make that choice? They need to be able to make an informed choice about how they wanna live their lives. And um, they're often not given that choice because many times in the clinical setting, their clinician doesn't know, know themselves to be able to offer that choice. Um, so if, if someone is willing to try something new, embrace something different, would rather live a longer, not just longer, but a healthier life, um, be able to minimize risk, be able to minimize procedures they might need, be able to minimize medications, many of which have terrible side effects, then if they're willing to try something new that we've demonstrated not only in our preclinical programs, but many others have demonstrated in an over 40 year body of evidence has demonstrated, um, if they're willing to try it, um, it, it will work if they're willing to get on board. Mm. I think Josh and his, over 50 missing chins club members and his many, many family members. And then many, many other people outside of that circle who we know have made major lifestyle change are testament to that. Right. And Boyana, I'm, I'm curious what you, you know, you've been practicing even within all the constraints of, of your profession, you've been practicing this sort of lifestyle medicine. What have you seen in, in your patients? Like how, how do you manage to, uh, you know, do, do you get them to change? And what do you say? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think it just really highly varies on the person. I think one of the things with this program is that people who are already interested or um, maybe early on in their stages of change, where they're, they have some level of readiness to make a change, they're going to come to well start or another program and, um, and, and have some level of openness. Um, when, when you look at just the general population who comes to me as a primary care provider, not because I also am, uh, focused on lifestyle or because I'm going to talk to them about stress management and diet and exercise who just come to me because they're sick or they need a physical exam or they just need a provider. Um, you get a broad range of, uh, readiness and interest in, in change, and I think that, again, as a provider, 
one of the things that's the most important to me is that we establish rapport and trust so that they come back and we can continue working in small steps. Again, another thing that we already talked about is that as a provider in one-on-one -on -one visits, I cannot give them the benefit of a support group and of people who have already done it or who are also in the, who are in the same boat who are thinking about doing that um, that could be helpful. But I can certainly, if I, if I see that there's an openness, I can certainly um, tell them about some of the evidence, some of the research evidence. I can tell them about successful cases, about people who have done it, who have tried, who have done it, and who have had a sustainable result when it comes to weight loss and improvement in diabetes. Or if there's no readiness, simply just building trust and rapport and, and examining, again, one of the things that Olivia mentioned is the root cause. Well, you know, why is there not a readiness? Is there depression? Is there a um, lack of sleep and, and uh, other life stressors and work stressors and family stressors where the last thing on their mind is like, oh, I want to be healthier and try to figure out my diet. There are a lot of other layers and a lot of other areas to address. So my approach is that I really assess as best as I can where my patient is, um, build rapport, work with them, show that I'm available and, and ready and, and uh, excited to talk about some of these things, but ultimately that I'm always going to meet them where they're at. Because if I try to push a certain agenda, well, you should be healthier and we need to get these medications off your list, they're not going to come back. I'm going to make them feel bad. I'm going to make them feel guilty about their habits. Um, and they're just not going to be interested in following through in any way. Mm. Yeah. And I'd like to you know, add to that. that um, you know, so Josh and I are here because we created the Big Change Program, which is now mm -hmm. being, being folded in. And one of the things that really surprised me is... Mm -hmm. The, the value of the group, because I kind of felt like, well, the best thing would be to, for me to work with someone one on one. And then if they can't afford it, well, then we'll throw them in a group. Mm -hmm. right? And I discovered that it's actually the opposite, that I had people that I had been coaching one on one and we'd been making progress. And, you know, I'm a decent coach and people were appreciative. But then when I said, hey, why don't you come join the big change calls? Several people like immediately took off like a rocket because of the all the things of the group, the, the accountability, the feeling like, you know, Josh has this wonderful metaphor of like we're all like um, pulling on a tug of war and we're all in the same team. And some of us are like right near the mud pit in the middle. Right. And if, if, if we lose, they're going to fall in. And some mm -hmm. some of us are like way in the back and like we could let go for a while. No one's even going to notice but we're still, we're, we still are beholden. We, we, we have brothers and sisters who are in danger and that we need to keep pulling for their benefit. And, you know, I know Josh is not going to blow his own horn, so I, I, you know, we will have to do it for him. <laughs> but, you know, Josh is the, the life of the party, right? He's at this, you know, this incredible, um, you know, I guess it's like a Louisiana thing, but taken to, uh, to this beautiful extreme of, you know, just wanting everyone to be uh, to be happy, everyone to be included, everyone to be celebrating. And when Josh and I started working together, we had this dynamic in the big change calls where Josh kind of set the the mood and the tone. Like every, you know, like like groups have different flavors to them, and it's very often to be like who steps up. And the way Josh naturally steps up to lead a group created this incredible, intense um, forward momentum for everyone that was so much greater than what even I, if I were, you know, a fantastic coach could provide for people one on one. It just normalized it and it just became this, this snowball effect. Um, Josh, I'm wondering if you, I, I know I've just embarrassed the hell out of you, but I'm wondering if you have thoughts on that from a, uh, you know. Well, it's just about, it, it's all about community for me. Like, I mean, the plants are great and the running is great, but really the thing that runs throughout all of it, for me, for the sustainability of it all, is community, right? 
I mean, I have community around my running and I have community around the plant-based diet and the advocacy of it. There's different communities, the people that are more interested in the animals and people that are more interested in the health. And so my point is that it's about building community, maybe even more than one community in this new lifestyle of ours, right? And and so I, I feel like helping to be a part of um, people uh, creating that new community in their life around these new ideas uh, is a critical, critical component. It has been for me. And so I want to, not that I know any better, but I just want to participate as a friend inside of that activity of community building, um, which is very special to me. It's something I saw my grandfather spin around this planet doing my whole life is just, he didn't need a reason to make a friend with a person. It was, you know, he had, but he did, he had, he had groups around his fishing and groups around his hunting and groups around his traveling and groups around his photography that he loved to take. And, you know, and so it just feels really natural to be put in a situation where I'm asked to be friends with people is all that we're doing. here, And um, that is an amazing thing to be able to be uh, let loose in that manner and have someone who's a real sort of rudder and can kind of keep everything on track. Like Howard, um, I think is just a wonderful, uh, I don't know, combination that in, in those settings to really sort of instill some, community but on a deep level like more like a friendship and a kinship if you will around these ideas and that's how we sort of make them indelible in in creating an an entire entirely new lifestyle um it's through the community component of it we'll 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 all we'll all comply to the specifics of what we know the nutrition is and the movement is um to to varying degrees uh, at different points in the continuum. But if we have a good, safe community around these ideas and around progressing in them and orienting ourselves towards progress in in them, um, you're just kind of set for life. And that's where I find myself today. And I want to be able to share and help people get on that same boat, you know? I think you're so right, Josh. If I can just add... You know, we know from studies that people who are making habit changes, if their partner is doing the same thing, that they're more likely to succeed. We also know that being in a supportive community improves your mental health, that improves your lifestyle. Um, So there are so many benefits, like you said, from being a part of a community. And we also know that being surrounded uh, by an unhealthy community is more likely to make you unhealthy. So we see it both ways. And I think creating something that's safe, as you said, and something where, where people can relate um, to each other through the process is absolutely superior to uh, just sort of doing it on your own. Right. And there's this real selfish component to me to where I'm trying to take my very unhealthy community to help create the very unhealthy version of me and actually like go in on the offense and try to help to change them specifically. Cause I don't want to leave that community. I don't want to not be a part of that community. I love you guys, you know, um, I love you so much that I kind of wish you would stop eating so much Buddha and cracklings. Like, cause you kind of keep kind of killing yourself. Right. And so being able to do that and having a platform to do it is, It's just been something that's exciting to me. I also think what's cool about what we're doing and how we're doing it is using the kind of see one, do one, teach one model where we have folks like Josh and Howard who have actually been through their own significant lifestyle changes and are helping others now to make that change with the serious street cred that goes along with having done it. Um, And that's what we can want to continue to do is to, Um, train and credential coaches um, who have done the same and can really speak to the challenges and the, and the difficulties and the dark times in going through this. Um, And I think that's, that's pretty huge. I don't, I don't know that anybody else 
can say that any other type of program can say that they do that. Yeah, I was thinking about that on a, on a run recently, just sort of the, the dark secret of healthy lifestyle change is that it's all about the food and the movement and the stress management. And it's not at all about that. It's all about having the skills to figure out how to change your habits. And it's not at all about that. What it's, re what it's really about is when, when you, and, but you have to take it in that order, that once you start you know, removing all of these, um, these crutches that we use to get through the day, whether it's the food or um, the way, you know, other, our other behavioral addictions that don't serve us, is what comes up is this, this feeling like um, we could be more. It's, it's almost like, like the people who go, like we call it the big change program because we discovered that what people end up doing once they start approaching their health is they, you know, they deal with limiting beliefs, they deal with demons, deal with sadness, deal with, in many cases, past trauma. And it's not like we're just trying to prevent and reverse bad things. It's like opening the door for people to really become their best, most authentic selves. And I've, you know, and I've got to say, I'm so excited for in six months or a year from now, when we've got so, you know, some significant organizational clients to see how that changes the culture, to create this culture of, of can do, as opposed to all we want to do is basically prevent disease and lower their healthcare costs. All right. Yep. Totally agree. So Olivia, uh, CEO on the, on the, uh, on the steering, where, where are we going? Where are we going? Well, we're going um, right now. We are trying to hit the ground running with uh, self-insured employers. So we've secured our first employer customer and have a couple others uh, in the pipeline. But uh, the goal is to continue to be able to bring the program uh, to companies that wh whom we can help very much, um, you know, on an individual level for their employees and also on a population level for their whole employee employee pool and then for the company itself to remain more competitive um, because they are lowering costs and and uh, building a better culture overall so um, that's the goal this year to get three to four more uh, employer customers um, as well as we have a study in the works that we are are planning a, a randomized control trial with 200 type 2 diabetics which we're very excited to be able to do and demonstrate hopefully, um, amazing results that will also make inroads um, with uh, help us make inroads with employers. Um, we are also interested in working with health systems and you know having people uh, post discharge from the hospital, re preventing readmissions, and helping people truly get better. Um, you know at least uh, to a degree, uh, much better than they would if they just maintained the status quo um, post hospitalization. So. Um, so those are some of the exciting things we have uh, in the works right now. We also want to, uh, we're working to get a consortium of athletes together who are plant-based or plant forward to help reach uh, their communities and to have WellStart involved with that as well. Right. And um, do you feel comfortable talking about sort of our, our risk mitigation policy regarding, uh, you know, Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're very confident from based on our results thus far that we can, if somebody is willing to take the steps necessary to be a part of the program, to participate, to do, um, you know, take the, take the steps necessary that they're guided through, um, we're very confident that we can help them achieve amazing results. And so uh, we're willing to put our money where our mouth is and say to employers, look, if you don't have an employee succeed by meeting biometric benchmarks, um, you know, we will basically refund most, if not all of the cost of a program for that person. So, uh, so it's very, very low risk for the employer and we make it, um, we make it easy on them. We go in there, we help, you know, we'll go talk to employees, tell them what we're offering, engage them, get them enrolled and, take them through the program. And, and so it's, uh, it's very low risk and basically very much 
uh, there's a lot of upside for the employer. Right. And Boyana, um, we're also working with several plant-based doctors who are sending us, you know, their patients who, because they also have the 15 minute um, limitations. Can you, can you speak, you know, speak to a moment to plant, because there's a lot of plant-based professionals who listen to this podcast. Um, Mm -hmm. Can you speak to them for a minute about why they might consider uh, pointing people in our direction? Absolutely. So um, some of the great things about this program is that we are able to uh, tailor the person's experience somewhat to whether they already have a chronic disease such as diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, uh, versus if they're at high risk. So maybe they have prediabetes, maybe, they, um, maybe they're overweight or obese, but they don't already have um, a diagnosis of diabetes and are maybe not already on medications, but we're really looking to lower the risk. Um, so in the prevention arm, in the disease prevention arm, we offer an intensive lifestyle change program that's 12 weeks long, where we offer uh, dietitian visits, health coach visits with you and Josh. Um, as well as uh, this uh, wonderful curriculum that really offers um, both behavior change uh, um, advice and and methodology that's very actionable, very much speaks to the person, as well as some education around uh, nutrition, movement, uh, stress management, and so forth um, that that people have access to when it arrives on their phone daily. Uh, In the disease reversal program, so for people who already have established disease, um, those people would get the uh, 12-week lifestyle change program uh, that I've just mentioned, as well as um, physician visits to supplement um, the program. And these physician visits can be delivered by the referring physician, uh, or it can be delivered by one of our physicians. So there's flexibility there. And I think, again, just to, just to echo what's been said and, and to really emphasize some of the benefits of this program, in addition to routine clinical care, um, is that people are going to meet other individuals who are struggling with very similar things who they'll be able to relate to um, and, and be sort of taken on this journey with. And they're really going to develop some, some strong bonds and, um, and people they could potentially turn to for support. Um, and, and again, what I really love about our program and why I'm so passionate about it is that, is that it's not just about, well, this is what you should be eating. Here's your meal plan. Here are your calories a day. No, it's not about that at all. It's about a complete shift in, in one's mindset. Um, and I think that's much longer lasting, has much deeper effects, um, and, uh, and can really bring about a significant change. So I would definitely encourage all uh, practitioners out there, uh, physicians, uh, dietitians, uh, um, nurse practitioners, physician assistants who are working with patients, whether in a primary care setting um, or or in a different setting, to strongly uh, consider referring to our program because I think we can... um, provide um, excellent complementary support to what they're, um, they're already receiving. Yeah. And I just want to add one quick thing. We, so the 12 weeks is the intensive and that's where a lot of the, the magic happens, if you will, but we have ongoing continued support that goes for a full year or beyond if necessary. Um, so I think that that's also a really important uh, cementing habits and, and making them last is obviously the, the key thing that we want to achieve. Right. And Olivia, can you quickly speak to, uh, for, you know, biz dev for, for people who are listening who might be able and willing to to help us find employers, to help find help us find populations? I just want to say, like, you know, this is this is my podcast. I've produced um, almost 300 episodes without charging anybody anything, without taking money from anyone for like the people on the podcast have never I've never gotten paid for promoting anything that they've ever done. And this is kind of like the first time I'm going out to my community and saying, um, help me make a buck. And, you know, and if, if you're watching this and not just listening, you can see, you know, how much money we spend on overhead for our fancy offices here. Right. So, Olivia, behind you is a I believe it's a purple elephant with a hat. I think you're in uh, your daughter's room, maybe. 
Yep. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, we're, we're all in our spare bedrooms, right? <laughs> Put, putting this together. So I, you know, I feel very comfortable, um, you know, making, making the ask, um, be, you know, partly because I know you guys so well now and I know where our hearts are. Um, but also, you know, how, how can folks help us? Uh, so I think, you know, anybody who is listening here probably has some appreciation for a plant-based lifestyle, for a healthy lifestyle. Um, so one of the ways you'd be helping is really just by helping get the word out to more people in the world about it. And the other piece is helping us get, and I know that, that goes along with that, is getting us in the door for more with more employers. So if you are an employer, if you are a leader in a company, if your uncle is, if your neighbor is, uh, if you work for a company where folks have your ear, um, we would love to speak with them, especially if they're self-insured. So it tends to be a larger employer, a few hundred employees or more. Um, we would love to speak with them about bringing the program in. It can be, we can start with a limited engagement. We can start with a small number of people. We don't necessarily start working with the entire company at once if we're talking about thousands of employees, um, but you can help. And we have a binders arrangement where you are able to have, get some remuneration for, uh, uh, from that if, if it pans out. All right. Well, is, is there, I see we're like a minute before uh, Boyana has to uh, turn into a pumpkin and go to her next thing. But uh, any, anything we, we haven't said that we should, we should mention now? I mean, I'll just add that I think it's a really exciting time in healthcare, and uh, uh, there is a, a huge transformation that has already started. Um, and, you know, as, as we addressed before, we know we know that there's this change coming about and it's maybe happening slower than we'd like it to. Mm. Um, but I think it is a very exciting time and people are starting to recognize um, the fact that what's been done so far is simply not enough to address the current problems. Um, and this is an innovative way to to solve that problem, to try to come to some sort of a solution that's going to work for most people and I'm really excited to be a part of it and um, and excited to to work with people and, and other practitioners and companies who are you know willing to invest in their employees and, and their patients and, and try something that's currently not the standard of care but absolutely should be. Right. When I'm thinking about it, like I was listening to Josh talk about, you know, basically how accidentally something clicked for him. It reminds me of sort of like lightning. Right. We, we all know lightning exists. We have no idea where it's going to strike or when. It's a fairly infrequent event. And then in the last 150, 200 years, we've tamed it. We now have electricity you can plug in. And so right now, you know, lightning is striking people like Josh and they're spontaneously waking up to their authentic human potential. And what I would love for us to be able to do is to contribute to this vast movement that wants to turn it into something like we can plug people in. And because it's based on natural forces, because it's based on the natural human diet, because it's based on natural human movement, on the natural human capacity and, and need for kinship, that this doesn't have to be an uphill battle. And I couldn't be happier or more proud of working with, with the three of you and with all the other folks that we're, we're collecting uh, along the way. Right back at you, Howard. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. So this, myself every day. Yeah. So this, this could be one of those really awkward endings that we don't have to uh, subject, subject all the listeners to. So um, I want to thank you guys so much for, for taking the time. And I want to thank uh, you, the listener. Uh, I hope this didn't seem like too self-serving, a commercial, you know, we're all doing this not to not to make a buck, but to be able to make the dollars in order to keep doing this work. So if you believe in the plant based movement, if you believe in the the movement for natural human health, you know, I, I feel like you'd be you'd be promoting that agenda by by helping us do what what we're put on this earth to do. So uh Thank you guys so much, and thank you, everybody, for listening.
If you enjoyed this episode of the Plant Yourself podcast and you'd like to support our mission, please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. For more information about the Big Change program, led by me and Josh Lajani and now under the umbrella of WellStart Health, you can check out either BigChangeProgram.com or WellStartHealth.com. And be sure to check out the show notes for today's episode with links to everything we talked about at PlantYourself.com slash 261. If you're new to the show, you can catch up on 260 archived episodes over at plantyourself.com. And while you're there, you can sign up for my newsletter on how to change your health and behavior, which is called The Big Change Bulldog. If you would like to support this show, you can share this and other episodes on social media and via email. You can write a review on iTunes. I've got three beautiful new reviews this week. Um, One from Chris Little VA says... Not just about diet, this podcast presents a range of subjects related to lifestyle medicine, solid scientific grounding, and interesting human stories. Very engaging and insightful. Thank you, Howard. Well, thank you, Chris Little. Got another one from Always Go 42, specifically talking about the conversation with Cyrus and Robbie on mastering diabetes. And Always Go 42 writes, I really loved the recent podcast with Cyrus Kambata and Robbie Barbaro. They did an excellent job at explaining the how and why our bodies react to healthy and unhealthy food. I've heard so many people with and without diabetes say that they need to limit or avoid fruits and starchy vegetables like potatoes because of the spike in sugar or glucose. Little do they know that the reason the glucose stays in their bloodstream is because their cells are full of fat and there's a no vacancy sign hanging on the door. Oh, I love that. Great job, Howard. Please keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Always go 42. I got one more for you from Mike from Tosa. The podcast has helped keep me centered on my journey. It's difficult having been an omnivore my entire life and to stay on the new path. Howard and his guests have helped keep the seed firmly planted. There are great ideas as well as thought-provoking guests that remind me why the journey is important for my overall health. We have been plant-based since September of 2017. It was all triggered by chronic health issues that my spouse experienced as well as scary blood work results for me. We are feeling great and have noticed significant changes in our health, but we know the journey needs to continue. Howard, thanks for your work and passion. They have been a great help. Keep up the great work and fight. Mike from Tosa, thank you so much for sharing those words. Another way to support the show is to become a patron through Patreon with an ongoing contribution. You just go to patreon.com slash plant yourself, or you can go to plantyourself.com and just look for the Patreon link in the right sidebar. And that really helps with the expenses. I have just placed an Amazon order, almost, an order for a new recorder and a new mixer that I think would help the um, some of the spikes and drops in, in uh, audio volume that have been happening more and more. I think my old mixer is just getting ready to go. And the new recorder with better preamps will help me with live interviews when I travel or when someone comes out to me. You know, and if you're thinking, well, you know, you just joined a startup. Why do you need a Patreon account anymore? Well, the key word there is startup. Um, It it probably will be a year, year and a half before uh, we're taking, you know, regular salaries. So this podcast still is going to be a a source of income for me, hopefully, as we as we ramp up. In garden news, we put in a pond um, and we are digging new beds. We've just covered up all the Bermuda grass with um, dumpster divin, dumpster dove cardboard, and uh, now putting up some wood chips over that, and then going to lay out beds and start planting things. My wife thinks that a, an entire bed of sunflowers this year is in our future, as is a lot of the herbs, because she's taking an herbal medicine class and is excited to to grow and then harvest and make use of those plants as well. In running news, I'm excited this coming weekend, a bunch of my buddies from Louisiana are coming up to my neck of the woods to run the Umstead 100, and I'll be pacing them through what looks like miserable weather through the middle of the night on Saturday night. Uh, I may do uh, one or two loops. That'll either be 12 or 12 and a half or 25 miles, depending on how miserable I feel like being. But, uh, you know, it's all good until you're, you're out there in the, in the mud and the freezing rain. Okay, thanks, of course, to Will Ridenauer for allowing me to use his beautiful song, Sabali Dawn, Dance of Peace. Check out willridenauer.com for more of his beautiful Cora music. And last and most, thanks to all of you Plant Yourself podcast patrons. We got a new one this week, so if you listen all the way to the end, you'll hear her name. 
Kim Harrison, Lynn McClellan, Anthony Disson, Brittany Porter, Dominic Mara, Barbara Whitney, Tammy Black, Amy Good, Amanda Hathaway, Mary Jane Wheeler, Ellen Kennelly, Melissa Cobb, Rachel Barron, Christine Nielsen, Tina Sharf, Tina Aaron, Jenna Polkanovsky, David Bysnick, The Mysterious, Michelle X, Health with Felton, Victoria Dolomanova, Leah Stoll, Alan Christensen, Colleen Peck, Michelle Andrew, Josina, Julian, Roland Stoll, Stu Dolnick, Sarah Durkis, Ron Circus, Kelly Cameron, Wayne Pedersen, Leanne Peterson, Janet Selby, Claire Adams, Tom Franzik, Jeanette Benham, Gil, Esther, David Dotnick, Blair Cyber, Dorona Visa, Dio, and Carol Argentati, Jody Friesner, Ruth Ann Thunderbrick, Misha Rosen, Michael Laura, Beck, Beagle, Mysterious, Tracy Z, Alicia Lemus, Rebecca Hughes, Val Lindemann, Rhymes with Cinnamon, Nick Harper, Stephanie Holmes. Martha Bergner, Nicole Ramsey, Susan Alan, Molly Levine, the Inscrutable Harry R. Susan Levin, the Panda Vegan, Craig Kovic, Adam Sharp, Karen Burry, Heather Morgan, Ashley Corcoran, Kelly Machia, Deanne Norton, Bonnie Lynch, and Plant Happy Oregon, Sabine Kurtzels, Nigel Davies, Mary Bloom, Theresa Copel, Cheryl Rood, Liz Juliet, Watkins, Reed O'Connell, Brian Sheridan, Shannon Hirschman, Kate Rosalind, Daya, Julie Langholm, Hedda Gardiza, Tuzan, Mock, Connie Hainlin, Harry Greer, Alicia Davis, Abby Vallel, Hot, Heather O'Connor, Carolyn Jensen, Cherry Olakoski, Plant Power for Health, Karen Smith, Kami Rannies, Karen and Joe Crabtree, Trees, Ken, Tanya Lewis, Kirby Burton, Teresa Carell. Kevin McCauley, Elizabeth Rothschild, Kelly Miracle Baker, and Jesse Shelley Dwyer, and welcome to Jenny Hazelton to the family. Thank you all for your generous support of the podcast. That's it for this week. As always, be well, my friends.